It was around 1860 that the pressure volume diagram for the ideal internal combustion engine, or IC engine, was first developed. This one is from NASA's website. At the time, steam engines were the prime mover, but ironically, the two types of steam engines were based upon lessons learned from the first internal combustion device. It was called a fire piston. It was invented over 1,200 years earlier somewhere in the Philippine archipelago. When the flammable material was attached to its piston and the piston driven into its smooth bore, the compression would ignite the material. The fire piston was brought to Europe by priests, sailors, and merchants during the late 16th century. However, even among Europe's curious scientists, it was thought to work by some magical power. So rather than study them, many, like these, ended up in museum basements. Now, some think that Galileo gave a fire piston to his young genius student Robert Boyle in 1641, just a year before Galileo died. Because years later, Robert Boyle was to build a large metal version of the fire piston, equipped with chambers and measuring devices to study the nature of air under compression. He was the first Western scientist to observe, measure, and define the principles behind the fire piston. He established the dynamic ratios between pressure, temperature, and volume of compressed gases. His work clearly showed that it was science, not magic, that made the fire piston work. The lessons learned led to the development of the steam engine, the Stirling cycle engine, and eventually the internal combustion engine. It took years of laboratory work to figure out the best and most efficient way to explode the air-fuel mixture inside the IC engine, and then even longer to make it work. If we look again at the PV diagram, we'll notice that the combustion process depicted here by the straight line between numbers 3 and 4 is defined as a constant volume process. In other words, ideally, the piston should hold a constant volume while combustion is taking place. That ideal is well demonstrated in this popular advertisement, which is similar to the lab experiments which demonstrated the need for combustion to be constant volume process in the first place. This comparison test of the Pulsar spark plug was photographed with a high-speed camera at 68,000 frames per second under a constant volume. Full burn took four thousandths of a second. Unfortunately, in real engines, the piston does not hold a constant volume. In this slow motion video of the inside of an idling engine, we see yellow flames flashing in the midst of a very turbulent event. Combustion continues longer than the power stroke and is still flashing as the exhaust valve opens. But don't worry, the catalytic converter will finish the burn. This video shows that a piston's dynamic when driven by a crank is characterized by a short dwell time and a rapid increase in volume. This leads to disruptive turbulence, poor combustion, and wasted fuel. The Dunville engine has a more ideal dynamic because of its constant acceleration cam. Unlike the crank, a cam is not disadvantaged by poor geometry. This allows the combustion to take place in a more or less constant volume, like the theoretical ideal. This diagram shows the motion in time of a piston moved by both a crank and our cam. The cam's long dwell time permits combustion to take place while the volume is held more or less constant. Another advantage the Dunville engine has is the insulated combustion sphere located inside the piston. This drives the charge past the long reach spark plug and permits a more complete combustion to take place inside a smooth environment with maximum volume and minimum surface. This promotes quicker, more uniform burn. One of the early mysteries of the fire piston was the fact that the thousand degree air goes right back to ambient temperature when the piston is pushed back out. Robert Boyle found that this happens because that heat and pressure generated by the initial work is converted back into work when the piston is expelled. When an engine burns its charge more or less at a constant volume like the Dunville engine, then more of the heat and pressure of combustion is converted into work. However, if the combustion continues out the exhaust ports and into the catalytic device, then efficiency is greatly compromised. The closer a combustion event is held at a constant volume, 
the more the heat of combustion is converted into work. The Dunbell engine also has a ceramic insulated head which keeps the heat from escaping into the engine. So again, more energy is converted into work. Despite this insulation, the exhaust temperatures are hundreds of degrees cooler than in a standard engine. The Dunbell exhaust temperature at 100% maximum output is about 450 degrees centigrade. That is so cool that you'll notice that we used aluminum exhaust headers. Now compare that to this car engine running on a dyno at 80% power. Header temperatures reached 1300 degrees centigrade. Aluminum melts at only 660 degrees centigrade. Let's take a look inside the Dunbell engine. Four rollers on each rod move the piston in its ideal dynamic the pistons come down against a sealed floor which makes the under piston area a preloading chamber as in most two strokes. The sealed cam case means that there's no need for oil in the fuel. The lower end is pressure lubricated. The long dwell time lets us lower the ports greatly increasing efficiency and cleanliness. As we start our first prototype you will see no smoke because the fuel is completely burned inside the engine from the very first firing. If you burn all the fuel in the engine, you don't need a second combustion area to clean things up like a catalytic converter. Every time the piston comes to the top, it fires. Our eight cylinder engine has as many firings per revolution as a 32 piston auto cycle engine. That's why we get so much power out of such a small package. Our chamber provides lean burn, there's no power robbing valve train, there's no piston scuffing, the engine has electric motor smoothness. The two-lobe cam is built like a gear reduction. This permits direct coupling to many applications like aircraft and watercraft. Its modular construction means it's much less costly to manufacture. But here's the most beautiful thing. After years of planning, our engineer, builder, test pilot, Mark Burrell, shows us how powerful this small 27 kilo engine really is. Clear prop. The group of businesses that have brought this project this far are now looking for capital to fund the taking of this technology into the marketplace. The rewards for bringing this engine to the market will be vast, not just for the investors, but for the whole world, as its production will ease the demand for fuel and lessen man's carbon footprint. So please take a look over our business plan. If you have any questions, please contact us and join us in our continuing quest to make the ideal internal combustion engine. The whole world is waiting for it. Thank you.